From the Opopco Studios in Oklahoma City, you're watching The Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell. Barry, it's time for our weekly five and five segment. Five segments, a minute each, a bell at the end. Let's get right to it. Let's start with this question, Barry. OSU, do you blame Savannah State? I mean, is this Savannah State game partially to blame for what we saw from the Cowboys at Arizona? Yes, the answer is yes. I don't think it's totally blame uh, on, on Savannah State, but uh, OSU did not have a season opener. Arizona did, was in a, a real game with Toledo. OSU was playing a, a, a team that's uh, basically no resistance. Cowboys didn't have to work on anything. Anything they did uh, worked fine. So um, I think uh, that game did, uh, did impede o Oklahoma State's progress. Well, and you saw some of the things that Arizona really struggled with. Uh, prime among them quarterback play was much much improved against Oklahoma State they struggled against Toledo uh, passing the ball and and looked a ton better so they had film that they could look at they could point out certain things to their players and say improve on this and frankly Barry OSU didn't have that there was nothing from that Savannah State game that they could point to and say let's improve so that game definitely was part of the problem in Arizona what about this question Barry OU related so you have a new starting tailback should Damian Williams be starting for these guys I don't claim to weigh in on who's going to run out there for the first play. If, if politically it's better for Dom Whaley to, to go out there, find me. I don't care. But in terms of carries and load, yes. Uh, Damian Williams is the bell cow for the Sooners. Nothing against Whaley, who's looked fine. Uh, he, looked, he looked solid against UTEP. Uh, maybe not quite as solid against Florida A&M. But uh, he, nothing against Dom. But... Damian Williams has the makings of a big-time tailback. I think you got to feed him the ball more than 10 times a game. Yeah, I think he's a guy just because of his skill set that he'll he, – I think he is going to get the lion's share of the carries. And, I, yeah, I'm the same way. I don't know if he's going to start, but he's the guy that – you're going to see featured. He's going to be the guy that's going to get the ball in tough situations. Barry, we've seen him run over guys. We've seen him spin out of tackles. We've seen that toughness. And with an offensive line that's had its struggles at the goal line, I think he's definitely a guy that can help. And maybe we don't see as much belldozer because they don't need it quite as much with Damian Williams in the fold. All right, another OSU question. Hey, Barry, should these Cowboys fear Louisiana Lafayette? How much should they worry about this team coming to town on Saturday? I would fear them quite a bit. Um, you know, Louisiana Lafayette is, a, is an improved version of Louisiana Monroe, which went to Arkansas and won. Yeah. Lafayette's a decent team. Uh, Cowboys went to Lafayette two years ago, trailed at halftime down in Cajun country. So this is a team coming off a nine-win season, beat, New or beat uh, San Diego State in the New Orleans Bowl. It's a, a team looking to, uh, you know, to uh, take down a big-name program. I think uh, it's a legitimate game. I think it is too. And before the season started, I wouldn't have said that. I definitely thought this was another game that would sort of just be a, maybe not a scrimmage. You, you, you see it being tougher than obviously Savannah State was. But after last week and questions and obviously problems that start to creep in with this OSU team, they've got a lot to fix, Barry. And Lafayette's talented enough that if OSU doesn't play better, they're going to win. They're going to win in Stillwater. So there's definitely reason for these Cowboys to be fearful. All right, Barry, our fun question of the week. Let's talk fashion. What are your go-to clothes? It's fashion week in New York. So what are those clothes that are your go-to apparel? Is it the, these spiffy blazers we well, you now wear? Where uh, my go-to clothes depends where am I going to. I mean, <laughs> I, we, I don't have enough information. Um, Actually, the one, piece of, uh, the one piece of apparel that I treasure the most is my old, uh, not old now, but uh, Negro League jacket. Oh, yeah. From uh, the Negro League Museum in Kansas you City. You love wearing that I love jacket. wearing yeah. that. Um, I, I've, I've told my wife, uh, first thing, you know, as long as the family's out and the house is on fire, as long as the family's out, I'm going to grab my laptop first, I'm going to grab my Negro League jacket second. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something also, very underrated, fleece pullovers, very underrated. Because if you get in a situation where you actually got to look halfway sharp, they, they're, they're not bad looking, but they're great to, to uh, just troll around town in. So uh, those two probably at the top of the list. You leave your jackets at your... These, you are, these are replaceable. I, they, they, I can go get these. I got, I got some at the cleaners right now. <laughs> well, I say my go-to clothes, it's flats, Barry. And I, I, I wear a decent amount of heels, but if I had my druthers, I'd wear flats as much as I could. But I'm short, so I wear heels sometimes so I can be a little bit taller. You're standing on boxes. You're standing on a box right now. It's true. I am standing on a box in my flats. It's a lovely day. All right, Barry, last question. Five and five. This one, the, a Thunder-related question. Is signing James Harden going to be impossible? Is this going to happen with the beard before the end of October? Uh, I don't think it's going to happen, but it's not impossible. It's just a decision, I think. Uh, it, it, the Thunder has a decision to make. 
Harden has a decision to make, and one of them's got to make the decision, which is, is, is James Harden willing to settle for less than market value? Yeah. Market value is $58 million over four years, the they maximum. They can't pay him now. I don't think the Thunder can pay him. No. They could pay him, but they're choosing not to because of the, the price tag is too high. Mm-hmm. That, would, that would, counting the luxury tax, that gets their uh, payroll costs up to almost $100 million a year in a, in a couple of seasons. So the question is, uh, are the Thunder really willing to go higher and, and push the envelope on that? Is James Harden willing to take less? Somebody's going to have to. Somebody's going to have to budge for this to work. Yeah, and I, I just don't know if it's going to get done. I fear, for Thunder fans at least, that this could be a Jeff Green type of situation. Uh, Jeff Green played into the season, but then got traded before the trade deadline. Surprised everybody. I think James Harden will play some games for the Thunder this year, Barry. He may play the whole season, not under the, a new contract, or he may get traded. I, I just, I don't think he's going to be here long term. I just. I think there's too many question marks out there in that luxury tax. It's a big deal for a team in a small market like this. Hey, be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoma.